25 minutes after six. Good to have you with us here on the South African Morning. Big day in the world of business, big day in the world of the economy, of course, especially uh, here in South Africa. Medium term budget policy statement coming out later this afternoon. Uh, we'll be live on ENCA as well. Let's just check in on the markets and then we'll talk expectations. Nick Kunz, uh, always great to have him with us. Senior Portfolio Manager, Sunlam Private Wealth, uh, joining us uh, this morning. Hello, Nick. Good to have you with us. I can see also a cloudy uh, view from your office. We'll get some clarity. We'll peek through the clouds of the Finance Minister's budget speech in a few moments. Before we get to that, though, uh, let's just run through our indicators and see what the markets looked like yesterday. Let's start off with gold and oil. How are we looking? Nick, you with me? How are the markets looking? Gold and oil, or what are those looking like for you this morning and the RAND? Yeah, morning, Gareth. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's gold uh, a little bit softer this morning. Uh, there was uh, a bit of a stronger dolly yesterday, as well as our budget today, which is obviously just pointed on your intro is a big one for us. Uh, there is the Federal Reserve as well tonight. So that's obviously a big play on the dollar. Uh, so that was a little bit softer. And um, yeah, Rand, Rand, I actually think the Rand's been behaving itself quite well recently. It's come back from 19. It's back in the mid sort of 18s. And I think that reflects a uh, Quite a quite a hawker stance by our, our finance minister the last few weeks. Yeah, I have it at eighteen sixty nine to the dollar at the moment as well. Uh, so we'll be watching that very closely. Then, depending on what the uh, finance minister says later, uh, we'll get to the budget speech in a second. Just some big business news: Astral announcing their losses are mm. going to be even greater as well. I imagine some sleepless nights for their shareholders. Yeah, oh, very difficult, Gareth. I mean, being a being a CEO of that business, I mean, I listened to uh, some comments yesterday from the CEO, Mr. Shooter. Uh, when you're spending, I think he said, 45 million rand per month on diesel uh, in your industry, that is very, very tough. And uh, on top of that, uh, bird flu, uh, they had to kill a whole lot of chickens as well. It really is a perfect storm. But, you know, interesting enough, we have to take a little bit of positive from it. Uh, it sounds like that is the worst that they've got to come. Uh, share price, incidentally, actually up on the day. So maybe the worst behind them for, for uh, certainly for that business and, and for the CEO and for shareholders. Uh, so Woolworths uh, as well, they've clearly seen a gap in the market that they want to expand on. Yes, everyone knows you can get your, your kitty and doggy food from Woolworths. They're going one step further. Uh, they're going to go now and, and acquire Absolute Pets. Quite a big move. Yeah, very, very interesting, actually. Uh, it's uh, that particular sector, the pet food industry, margins are still eye-watering, you know, 100% margins and markups and some of the stuff. So as there is a little bit of a margin squeeze from the rest of the industry with, with regards to, you know, basic food and staples, and all of us know the cost of living has gone up, that particular sector, margins still very, uh, pardon the pun, quite juicy. So uh, very, very interesting move. And I think there's going to be a little bit more consolidation to come. So watch the space. Yeah, watch the space. And uh, Nick, I want to ask you something just before we get to the budget uh, speech, of course, because you're a private mm. wealth manager. I'm going to ask you to put that hat on for a second. When you hear of a company like Woolworths uh, acquiring absolute pets, for, for someone who doesn't understand the investing side, doesn't understand the markets, buying into shares, what does someone watching at home do with that information? It's great that you and I talk about it, but what does someone, an ordinary South African, do with that? Well, I think, you know, if, if you are a shareholder, and, and nowadays, you know, access to information is far easier than it was, you know, decades ago. Everyone's got access to, uh, to what's going on almost real time. I mean, if you're a shareholder in Woolies and you're sitting at home and, and you see this particular uh, sort of investment taking taking place, uh, you d dig a little bit deeper, you understand a little bit about it. And from our point of view, if you're a basic investor, you'd say, OK, you know, Woolies has gone from we know the food side, we know the clothing side, now it's stepping a little bit more into the, the pet food space. Is it a good thing? Look at the numbers. Uh, and you'd have to say, yes, it is a good thing. They're expanding. Mm. Uh, those who follow the business will understand that uh, we all love our pets and they're fairly recession proof. We tend to feed our pets before we feed ourselves. <laughs> so resilience being built there as well. So, so overall, uh, from a shareholder point of view, you'd say, yeah, I like the story. You want to buy the share and you like what they're doing. And incidentally, the share up 3% yesterday. So validating what I, what I think we're all thinking. It's a, it's a, good, it's a good investment for all of yeah, It's also, I'm sure, a very, very good idea for uh, absolute pets as well. They're not exactly complaining by the acquisition. I'm sure. Okay, let's talk medium term budget policy statements a little bit later. So there's talk right now that uh, austerity measures need to come in, cut back on the expenses. Some are saying, no, we need to spend more to make more. Where, do, where does Nick Kuhn sit this morning? What should the finance minister be doing? 
<clears throat> Goodness me, Gar, this is a really, really difficult one. I think uh, one of probably the toughest job right now for the finance minister. You know, we know there's going to be a revenue shortfall. We've, we've known that. And he's been pretty vocal. His team have been sort of wheeled out from everywhere, from uh, all the, the Sunday Times and all the other channels talking about it. So what are we going to do if there's a revenue shortfall? Well, I mean, typically you've got, uh, you've got to cut your expenditure or you've got to come for funding. Uh, and, uh, you know, less than six months or seven months away from election, coming along and trying to raise taxes to, to raise that, uh, to, to, to get funding is very, very difficult. So I'm not quite sure what they do. I suspect they're obviously independent. I expect there's going to be some cuts to come. I wouldn't, I can't see them, you know, doing a sort of broad-based uh, increase in VAT to try to raise, raise funds. I don't think that's going to happen. It's, it's just too much of a political hot potato. Mm. But it's nevertheless difficult, difficult decision today. And uh, it really is going to be a bit of a move for the RAND, whatever happens. Uh, Wayne, very, uh, I beg your pardon. And Nick, uh, as I say goodbye to you very quickly, uh, obviously we're going to see the, the markets react. What part of the markets are we looking at? Are we going to see a reaction from the RAND? What are the indicators we look for once the budget <clears throat> is finished? Well, there's, there's three indicators you look at. Firstly, obviously the, the real time, uh, the most liquid market is actually your currency market. So the RAND against your dollar cross, that's going to be, uh, you pointed it out, it's around 1860 thereabouts. Uh, if we get a minister that seems to be a little bit uh, loose with the spending, you'll see that RAND weaken. So it'll go out towards sort of 19 to the dollar. And the other thing to watch as well, Gareth, is is, is the bond markets. Uh, the 10-year bond is, is where they typically go to. If the government needs to raise money, they'll need to issue more bonds, more debt. Uh, and we'll see the, that cost of debt will, will increase. So you'll see that yield go out. So around about 12 and a half, 13 percent you'll see it expand because what will happen is your foreign investors or, or local asset managers who buy that debt will probably say, hold on a minute, we need to, uh, we, we take in a more debt from the government, uh, we demand a, a higher interest payment. So you'll see those debt yields go out and the bonds go down. So that's the first, uh, the two things uh, that you have, have a look at, which will be the real time reaction, mm. whether it's good or whether it's bad or not. Yeah, always great to have you with us, Nick, just making sense of what we're expecting. Also, what we're looking for as well. It's why we have Nick Kunz, uh, Senior Portfolio Manager, Sunlum Private Wealth, uh, joining us uh, this morning. So